Welcome to the final chapel service of Hillary Term 2021. A term where we've gone from the iciness of winter to the hopeful signs of spring. A term spent in lockdown, but now with the hopeful signs of reduced rates of COVID and ever increasing numbers of vaccinations. In chapel, our theme has been loving kindness as we've looked at different stories of kindness shown to friends and strangers and how Jesus modelled a life of self-giving love. In this service, we'll hear stories, songs, Bible readings, and imagine how some of those closest to Jesus might have felt as they lived and worked alongside him. We begin our service today with Jesus' words to his disciples as recorded in John's Gospel. He speaks of the ultimate act of kindness, that of being willing to lay down one's life for others. Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. So let's turn to God in prayer. Gracious and merciful God, we thank you that you are a God who loves each and every one of us. You have called us to love one another with that same love. We thank you that in this COVID pandemic, we have seen so many examples of sacrificial kindness as people have both in their work and in volunteering cared for the sick, the bereaved and the isolated. Strengthen us, we pray, and give us courage that we may continue to love others sacrificially. In Christ's name we pray, Amen. Mary, did you know that your baby 
is heaven's perfect land This sleeping child you're holding Is the great I am Mary, did you know? People often ask me, did you know, did you know how special he was when he was born? Did you know how it would be? How do you answer questions like that? Of course, I knew he was special from the moment the angel Gabriel visited me. I was told I had been chosen to give birth to the Son of the Most High, but I had no idea of all that was to come. When we dedicated Jesus at the temple, when he was just a few days old, Simeon the prophet said to me, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. And a sword will pierce your own soul too. And then there was that time when we lost Jesus. He was 12 years old and we were coming back from Passover in Jerusalem when we realised he wasn't with the group from our village. When we returned to Jerusalem, we found him in the temple, speaking with all the teachers of the law as if he were one of them. He couldn't understand why we were worried. He said surely we would have known he would be in his father's house. So yes, I knew life was never going to be straightforward. But even I've been amazed as I've seen the miracles he's done the people he's healed, the lives he's touched. There have been many times when I've wished I didn't have to share him with the world, but I know he sees everyone as his family. He loves each and every person he meets, even those who oppose him. He says that we have to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. He spoke and acted as if love could conquer all, as if mercy and compassion could overcome all evil. But can it? Does it? Jesus preaches good news to the poor and speaks of bringing a new kingdom of God. It's taken him into direct conflict with the religious leaders and now the politicians have got involved too. Simeon was right when he said that a sword would pierce my soul. I can only watch and pray, trusting God, that however this ends, he gave his son to the world for a reason. We turn now to the readings which tell of Jesus's last days on earth. The disciples have just eaten the Passover meal with Jesus. He's broken bread with them, shared wine, and spoken of how one of them will betray him. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserted, I will not. Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. 
And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for to you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Can you not keep awake for an hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come to the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough, the hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then, after a little while, the bystanders said again to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you want me to do with the man you call King of the Jews? And they shouted back, Crucify, Crucify him. him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify, Crucify him. him! So Pilate 
wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Are you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you wasn't there when they crucified my Lord. As I promised him that I would be. I told him I'd never desert him, but just a few short hours later I denied even knowing him. Three times I was asked. And three times I told people I was no friend of his. Just like he said I would. How could I fail him so badly? He trusted me with so much. He was the best friend I ever had. He saw gifts and skills in me that nobody else saw. The past three years with Jesus have been amazing. I thought it would last forever. I thought he was going to rule in a new kingdom. When we entered Jerusalem, Jesus riding on that donkey, it felt like the whole world was behind us. That everybody loved him and believed in him. Someone told me then, he'd soon be long gone. Somehow, whenever he talked about having to die, I never wanted to listen, but now his words, they just keep ringing in my ears. The Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed. And after three days, rise again. But well, once I got angry and I told him off for saying such things. He called me Satan, as if I was the devil, trying to tempt him away from doing difficult things. You can't imagine the shame that I felt. My friend was beaten and taken away to be killed. And where was I? Hiding, fearing for my own miserable life. Jesus said that I was the rock, the rock on which he'd build his church. But a rock's supposed to be strong and dependable. And those aren't words that you could use to describe me in those days. Thank God that's not the end of the story. But I keep forgetting it isn't about how strong I am or how brave I am. It's just about whether I'm willing to trust him and trust his love for me. I'm just so grateful that he loves to give second chances. Romans chapter 5 verses 6 through 8. When we were unable to help ourselves at the right time, Christ died for us, although we were living against God. Very few people will die to save the life of someone else, although perhaps for a good person someone might possibly die. 
But God shows his great love for us in this way. Christ died for us while we were still sinners. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger and of Joses and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. Were you there? When the sun refused to shine Were you there When the sun refused to shine Oh, oh, oh Sometimes it caused me to tremble To tremble, tremble Were you there When the sun refused to shine there when they pissed him in the side Were you there when they pissed him in the side Oh, oh, oh sometimes it caused me to tremble To tremble, tremble Were you there when they pissed him in the side Oh, 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 sometimes it caused me to tremble, to tremble, tremble. Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Hello, my name is Mary. Not Mary, mother of Jesus. And no, not Mary of Bethany, that's Martha's sister. I'm the other Mary. Mary of Magdala. You might have heard of me. And before you say it, I know what you're thinking. So many things have been written and said about me that just aren't true. 
Yes, uh, when I first met Jesus, my life was completely broken. I was broken. And I'd done so many things that I was ashamed of. But I never chose to sell my body. I met Jesus actually early on in his time of teaching. In that time when my life was shattered and broken. And I'd faced so many terrible things. But he made me whole again. It was amazing. And in response to this incredible healing, I chose to travel around with him and his followers, serving and ministering to the group and learning all that I could. You know, it, it wasn't just what he said. I learned so much from how he treated people, the way he saw great worth and value in every human life. And he really gave his time to those most in need. You know, even, even at the end, even when most of his disciples turned and, and they fled, which they did, I stayed. I stayed and I waited to watch, to be with him, however awful and however painful it was going to be. I had to do this because he had always stuck with me and he'd really taught me what it meant to love whatever the cost. You know, I, couldn't, I couldn't bear to see him die and to be alone. So yes, I was there when they pierced him in the side and when the sun refused to shine, that darkness. How could I describe it? It was bone chilling as if all the heat and light and love was being sucked out of the world. It was as if evil had the upper hand. And then to hear him cry on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It truly felt like the world was ending. The reading is taken from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 15, verses 42 to 47. When the evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Mark chapter 16 verses 1 to 8 the resurrection of Jesus when the Sabbath was over Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus and very early on the first day of the week when the Sun had risen they went to the tomb they had been saying to one another 
Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Were you there when he rose out from the tomb? Were you there when he rose out from the tomb? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when he rose out from the tomb? I had watched as they buried him in a borrowed tomb, but it was too late that night to anoint his body so I had to wait for the Sabbath to be over. But as soon as it was and, and Sunday dawned, I had returned to the tomb, taking with me all the spices that I needed to anoint his body. But the, the tomb was unsealed. The stone had been rolled back. And instead of seeing his body there, there was this angelic presence speaking unbelievable uh, words um, saying, he is not here, he has risen. Go and tell the others. Did I know what to believe? It's hard to say. You know, the darkness of his death, I was there. It was just so dark. But did you know that actually, even in the moment of his death, that even the centurion who was on duty declared, Surely this, this man is the son of God. He had seen it. Could it be true that evil can be overpowered by sacrificial love? That his love was more powerful than even death itself? Mark's gospel ends with the disciples still in hiding. The tomb is empty. Mary commissioned to go and tell the others that they will meet the risen Jesus. But she's overwhelmed by terror and amazement. Perhaps this lack of closure, this uncertainty as, what, as to what will happen next allows us also to ask questions, to wonder what we make of all of this. What would we have done? How would we have responded? I suspect many of us might have felt that fear, perhaps wondering if we dared to believe that Jesus would willingly die for us. A few years back, I was privileged to visit Belgium with the charity Toc H and visit some of the battlefields and war graves from the First World War. It was humbling, deeply humbling to visit places like Tynecott Cemetery, where almost 12,000 are buried, over 8,000 of them unnamed. They died in the hope and belief that their sacrifice was not in vain, but would ultimately bring a greater good. In the centre of the cemetery is the cross of sacrifice. A reminder that the cross 
an instrument originally of punishment and death, has come instead to symbolise the ultimate act of love, the willingness to lay down one's life for the sake of others. This Easter, I hope and pray that each of us will know God's kindness and recognise that we are loved unconditionally by God who gave his life that we might live. defeat brings new hope and a new future fill you with his new life and the blessing of God Father Son and Holy Spirit be with you now and always Amen